Do you like this position? And what about this one? And this one? And this? And this? And this? Hey guys, today we are going to learn how to play the Vienna game with a uh, move number 3, G3. It's going to be very interesting. The lines are aggressive. You can get good positions. As you could see at the beginning of the video, uh, you have attack possibilities, really good possibilities of attacking. And also some good things about this line is that you don't need theory. It's a scam where I will tell you where the pieces should be and how are the plans for the melee game. And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty playable this way. Unless your opponent plays something very special, you can use this development and these ideas in most of your games. And also something good is that this is not a main line. This means that your opponent doesn't see it so often, which also means that he's not prepared against it. So in general, when you play this line, your opponent is going to be a little surprised. It's going to be a little out of his comfort zone and uh, it's not going to know the typical positions or plans or ideas. So basically you're not playing, he doesn't know the theory. So you're not playing against a GM or you're not playing against a stockfish as it happens when you're playing a main line that they have already studied previously. So if that sounds interesting, let's get into being a game, the line with G3. I can tell you that I was analyzing like a hundred of games, selecting typical patterns, typical plans, tactical ideas. And also I selected the most instructive and clear games that I could. So I could show you the ideas for this uh, Vienna game with the line of G3. So I think it's going to be really instructive. And also I wanted to say that uh, once you get into a normal position in this line, which is going to happen in most of your games, uh, like this one that we have on the board right now. Well, once you get something like this, the performance is going to be, uh, it's really good. So we have the statistics on our favor. Observe that we are between 55 or even 60% in many uh, lines. So this means that uh, we are winning many games, most of the games, once we get into a situation like this. And I was filtering here uh, around beginner and middle game players. And also I was filtering a blitz and rapid game. So these statistics confirm that the position is good. It's comfortable. The plans are very clear and very easy to execute. And in general, around these levels or even a little more advanced level, the performance is going to be good. In this video, I'm going to show you the moves that you need to know at the beginning of the game, in the opening. Also, I'm going to show you some mid game plans, ideas. I will show you typical positions that can happen a lot and patterns that can happen very often and also how to deal with premature attacks by your opponent. And finally, I will show you examples where uh, you can execute the whole plan, the whole idea, so you understand everything about the meta game, how our pieces will be uh, placed. So that being said, let's get into the first moves of the game. So we have Vienna game with c4, a5, knight c3, and then knight to f6. And in this position, we are playing this move g3. It's a very normal development move. We want to do the fianchero on the king side, put the bishop over here. Basically, the idea of this line is that we're going to play a four, of course. That's the idea in Vienna. We're going to play it. That's why we're delaying the development of the knight. But we are not going to play a four move number three. That's not a, the idea here. We want to prepare the position. We want to develop our pieces, good squares, king safe, rook on f1. And once we are ready, then we will play four. And it's going to be very strong if we can actually do that with the pieces in good position. There will be a difference. When you play a four, move number three, with your king in the center and your pieces undeveloped, and when you can play a four with all your pieces in great position. So that, that's the idea for this line. We delayed a little because we are going to prepare it a little better. So once we play g3, our opponent can play some lines. Uh, the most common move, if I remember well, is knight c6. But also bishop c5 is very common and probably one of the best moves here. And also there is this line with bishop b4. So we're going to take a look at uh, some of these moves. But basically the best move, or at least for me, the most annoying move that black can play is d5. So this changes a lot because here, if they play d5, we cannot do the, the normal plan that I'm going to show you in, in the position. If they play d5, uh, basically they will get an equal game. So the good news is that they won't play it so often. So I have some statistics here about that. And you can see that d5 is like the move number four, I think, that they play more often. So it's not like we need to worry. 
And also remember, even if they play it, they are not getting an advantage. It's just a normal equal meter game. And I will show you how to play those positions right now. But keep in mind that they won't play it so often. So in the other lines with knight c6, bishop c5 and bishop b4, uh, we can do uh, what I'm going to show you here, these ideas where we are going to develop uh, the pieces very naturally and eventually we'll play some, D, uh, some uh, f4. That's, that's the idea. Well, let's see. If they play d5, well, we just capture. He takes d5, knight takes d5, and then we develop. And then the best move for black is knight takes e 3 and we are playing b takes e 3 And, well, they, they can develop pieces in many ways here, but let's assume bishop d6, which is one of the best moves here. Uh, this time we develop the knight over f3 because we are going to focus on the break on d4. And if they play knight c6, we castle. They can castle as well. We play rook b1 to activate the rook and make it harder for him to develop a, that bishop. They can play rook b8 and then we can play d4. This position is totally equal, but it looks fine. I mean, it looks very playable for, for white. We have a good central pawn. We have a half open file bishop in the fianchero on the great diagonal. So it looks very playable. So this is like the worst situation. Like... Uh, the worst uh, case scenario where, as I told you, we're equal, no problem. And again, it's a line that they won't play so often when they play d5 in move number three. So that being said, let's focus on the other lines when they play uh, some other moves, for example, bishop c5. And this is what is going to happen or what should happen most of the time. So when they play this line, we are going to play normal development with bishop g2. Let's say knight c6, we play knight e2. And let's say d6, we castle, for example. And there is a move here that they need to play, and it is going to be the move a6. And very often they will forget to play it. That's also something good about the line. But they need to play it. Because if they don't play a6, we will play knight a4. And we'll get the busher. And imagine this position, comfortable, uh, where we are playing a4. We are attacking on the king side, and we have the two bishops. It's going to be great. So, I mean, even if they have the two bishops, uh, we are a little better, or very comfortable, at least. So imagine if we can get the, the advantage of the bishop pair. It's going to be much better. So, they need to play a6. It's a move that they should play. If they don't play it, you know, play knight a4 and get that bishop. And you're going to be very good once you bring your bishop to e3. It's going to be amazing there on that square. Well, uh, let's assume a6. And then we play d3 here. Let's assume they castle. And we are going to play this move, a3. a3 is totally necessary for some reasons. Uh, in some positions, the bishop is not on c5. And we are going to bring our bishop to e3. And if our bishop is on e3, we don't want to let him play knight g4. So in those positions, we need to play a3 for that reason. In this position, we need to play a3 because there is a pin here. So we cannot play a4. So the plan is to play king h2 and a4 after that. So that's why we need to play a3 this time. So, well, a3, let's say bishop e6. We can play king h2 here. And let's assume they play knight d4. And then we can play a4. So we are going to get into the middle game now, but let's highlight uh, what is going to happen in the opening and where pieces should be developed. So the bishop goes over the fianchero, the knight goes over e2. Of course, we are going to castle and our pawns will be on d3 and a3. Eventually we'll play f4, maybe we need to play king h2 uh, before we can actually play a4. That's the idea for the opening, that's our plan. Unless something very exceptional, something very special happens, that's, where, uh, that's what we're going to do. That's our scam for the opening in this Vienna game with 3 g3. So about the middle game, uh, let's assume we have something like this, we can get something like this. And, well, um, in this kind of positions is where I was saying at the beginning of the video that we have very good performances in general, according to the Leach's statistics. So, well, in this kind of position, uh, the, the, plans is more, the plans are more or less clear. So, very often we want to play a5, and also very often we want to play g4, knight g3, and, you know, expand over, over there, like pawn storming on the king side, and eventually, you know, f6. And of course we want to involve our queen maybe over h5. Also in some positions we can use the pin and we're going to talk about that here. We're going to see a couple of examples where uh, this pin is going to be very important because 
in these lines where the bishop goes outside the chain of pawns, uh, they might have a problem over here. So very often we can uh, keep that in mind and create some threats over g5 with our bishop. But also the best way to understand the middle game plans is by analyzing other games where they have been playing this line with very good results. So let's take a look at this one. And especially I want to focus on the pin that I was talking about and how interesting and annoying it can be. In this game, we're going to, to use that pin to get some advantage and create some problems. So, you know, opening totally normal, 45, knight c3, knight c6. If instead of knight f6, they play knight c6, this change, changes nothing. We can continue with our scam. So we can play g3, uh, bishop g2, they play d6. This time the bishop is inside. That is going to happen, I guess, in some of your games. But of course, this is very good, very, very passive for black and very good for us. Uh, we can continue with knight e2, bishop e7, we castle bishop e6, and then e4 already. Starting our attack with our idea very early. Black can castle, then d3, then they play queen c8, and then boom. This idea that uh, we have already talked about. Now you have a lot of space on the king side, you're getting a tempo, and everything is ready to pawn storm over there. Black plays here bishop to d7, and then we can play h3, very typical in this line. They can play knight a5, and here they play the g4 directly. c5, controlling the center very well. It's probably not so good, but it's the move that he's playing. And then there is g5. Also in some positions, you can play knight g3 first, very typical. Bishop b3, also good. And then g5, you can prepare it a little better. In this game, g5 was played, which is also, I guess, a good idea, knight e8, and then knight d5. So yeah, you're attacking here. The knight is great on the outpost on d5. Black plays here queen to d8, and then, boom, f6. Destroying your opponent's structure, and this is going to be uh, bad for black here. Uh, g takes f6, g takes f6, knight takes f6, and this is the idea that uh, I wanted to show you how the pin is a problem for black in these positions. So knight takes e7, queen takes e7, and then bishop to g5. And this is totally one. We are going to get a piece up, and also... Uh, Checkmate is close, I think. In the game, king g7, and here we are winning in many different ways. You can play bishop takes knight. You can increase the pressure with knight g3, wanting to do things over here. Or you can play the move that uh, was played in the game, like queen e1, uh, reinforcing the pressure over here. So that's what happened here, and that's winning for white. But also let me show you another example where we are going to work with that pin again. So let's say e4, e5, knight, knight, g3, knight, f6, bishop, g2, bishop, c5. So this time the bishop goes outside, which is probably a very good option for black. So it's good to learn how to play in these kind of situations. So let's see, knight, e2, they castle, and then we castle and they play d6. At this point, we can play a3. We already said that, bishop, e6, and then a knight, a4. Okay, yeah, this is something we were saying. Like, if they don't play a6, we are going to try to get that bishop. And in general, we're going to be very well if we can do that. So they play queen d7 here. We get the bishop, of course. And then we need to defend here. There's too much pressure. So we need to play king h2 at this point. They play rook d8. b3 was played here. And at this point, knight d4 and then a d3. This is the normal the normal plan where we are going to, you know, develop the bishop over here and reinforce, reinforce the center. b5. And as you can imagine, f4 was played at this point. He takes f4. Uh, in some positions, we can also capture with a, with a piece here. But actually, with the pawn looks very good this time. It depends on the position. Uh, we need to analyze and see, compare the captures, compare what happens after the captures. But this time, with the pawn looks very good because you get this square for your knight and you're going to continue advancing. Rook f e8, knight g3. Observe that uh, we are not ready to play f5 yet, dropping the bishop. Because there might be some tactics with the with some pin over here and some capture on f5, and also there might be some checks. So it's probably not. A, it's probably we are probably not ready to play f5 yet. But after knight g3, this is a real threat. So black is going to play g6 here to prevent that. But of course, now we have a. We are now we are a, breaking the position, opening lines, destroying his structure with f5. After g takes f5. The pin, something we have been talking about that is going to happen many times. Our bishop 
using this diagonal can create many problems. So bishop g5 here. And well, this position is already very good for white. They play queen e7. Um, well, there's a move here that is also very important. And it is this one, king to h1. Uh, the idea is that they want to increase their pressure with knight h5. But there are some tactics uh, with the discovered uh, with knight g4. So it's not so clear that we can actually play knight h5 directly because they might discover and, and get your, your bishop. So there are some tactics over there. Uh, it's important to keep this in mind because our king is going to be very often on h2 and the queen is going to be very often over here. So th these kind of moves are always going to be an option, a defensive tactical option for your opponent. So keep that in mind. Um, maybe there are all good moves, but king h1 is probably going to work. And the idea is that now you're playing e5, you're, now you're playing at h5, you have many threats here, many ideas. So this is going to be winning for white. They don't have a way to get rid of all the threats. In the end, they played queen d6. And, well, they're attacking the knight a little. However, this uh, amazing move is going to work very well for white. It's going to be the surprising e5. The idea is that we are forking. And if the queen takes the pawn, it's going to be trapped. So, in theory... They, they should not take it. But then we are getting the knight. So black takes the pawn. And then, boom, bishop f4. And we are trapping the queen. We are getting the queen and we are winning the game. Let's see one third example about the pin and how we can take advantage of it. We have b4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, and then g3, knight c6, bishop, bishop, knight f3. This time, in general, we are going to develop the knight over here more often. But uh, let's take a look at this so you can get the idea of this kind of position. So d3, a6, and then knight a4. One more time, the bishop, you can get it, you get it. Bishop b6, you're going to get the bishop for sure, but there's no rush, so you can castle first. Bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, c3, and then g5. At this point, g4, bishop g6, and then knight takes bishop, of course, pawn takes knight. And here there's a move that uh, is really important, really special. One more time, taking advantage of the bishop not being here, uh, defending, and that is what is going to happen very often. So there is this move, knight takes pawn. And, well, the idea is that black cannot take the knight. In the game, black plays here knight a7. But let me show you what happens if they accept the knight. Well, then the pin is going to be a problem one more time. You can play bishop takes g5. And the thing here is that uh, you're attacking, he's defending, so it's fine by now. But he doesn't have a way to stop the the other pieces coming, like you're playing a four and that's something they cannot stop. And also in some lines you're playing d4, so you can try to play e5. And that's something they, they cannot stop. So that, that's what happens, that they are, there's a pain, they cannot get rid of it, they cannot escape from this, and that's just winning for, for white. So I wanted to show you this idea. In the game, well, black plays here knight a7, and well, knight takes, rook takes, and then a four. But now we have material advantage and also two bishops and a great position. King safer, so of course this is very good for white. He takes, bishop takes, queen h4, and then d4, very normal, expanding in the center, knight d8, and then d5, controlling, restricting that knight. Black plays here f6, and then queen f3, rook f7, and then one more time this queen is going to be trapped in three moves. We can play here bishop to g3, only move is queen g5, we can play here h4, only move is queen d2, and finally we can play at this point, the queen is escaping over here, so we make sure that doesn't happen. Rook f2, and that's winning the game for white. There is a situation that can happen when we play this line, like e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, and g3, that black can start a very early attack. It's very tempting, but it's not going to work. So let's take a look at this. Uh, they can play, for example, knight here, uh, bishop g2, bishop c5, and for example, after knight e2, they can play this move, knight g4. That can happen, because, you know, they have pressure on f2, but they can bring more pieces to attack f2. So this can happen, it's very tempting for your opponent, so we need to know how to deal with these kind of situations, with this kind of premature attack. So the idea is like, uh, we are going to castle, we need to do that right now, castling kingside. Uh, keep in mind that this is not good for black. We're going to get good positions, but we need to know how to deal with that pressure. So black is going to play queen f6, and then three attackers here. Uh, we're going to play here 
Uh, I'm going to show you this game where white plays queen e1, and this is going to be good enough. But actually, at the end, I'm going to show you that uh, there is a move even better than queen e1. So queen e1 is good enough. We have three defenders, three attackers, three defenders. We are fine. And the best thing is that we're going to play a3, and we're going to make the knight retreat very soon. So that's, this is not a real problem. They don't have a way to increase their pressure. They don't have a way to bring reinforcements here. So eventually his pieces will have to retreat and they will all be dis disconnected in bad squares. So that's why this attack doesn't work. It does not work. But uh, let, let's take a look at the game because this gets really interesting. Like they play knight before now. So more threats, more problems. However, we have this move, knight d5. Knight takes knight, pawn takes knight. In the game, black plays d6 and then a3. So now his pieces have to go back. In the end, they play knight f2, which is not getting anything. Um, there is also this great move d4, because we are taking advantage of the king in the center, and we are interfering the line. e takes d4, rook takes knight. After d3, well, we can use the discovered to make sure we are not losing the rook. Like, we can play knight d4, queen e5, and bishop e3. So now we save the rook, or the exchange, and we just have an extra piece in this position. In the game, black castles, rook f4, defending now, the knight hanging, d takes c2, rook c1, f5, queen c3, rook e8, bishop f2, bishop d7, rook takes pawn, and then a6, knight b3 simplifying, bishop takes f2, and rook takes bishop, and then after rook a, c8, a knight a5. So nothing too special after a, we got the extra piece, we just simplified, put our pieces in good squares, and it's just winning for white. But also I wanted to let you know that in this position, better than queen e1, is going to be this idea of knight d5. The idea is that you're attacking the queen, you're attacking c7, and there's nothing special here on f2, nothing really strong happens, you're taking the queen with check. So they should play like queen d8, and then we have this move d4. So basically they have to retreat, we don't even have to play queen e1 to make him retreat, we can make him retreat directly with knight d5. And then this move d4 is very strong, because we are, well, do we get the idea? After d4, they capture and then we play before. This is the idea. Like eventually we are getting the pawn on d4 with more threats. That's what is going to happen. So, for example, knight takes b4, you can capture on b4, and then after bishop takes, we can play queen takes d4, attacking bishop, attacking pawn. This position is great, probably decisive advantage for white. So this is how you deal with a premature attack in this line. It's very tempting, so I guess it's going to happen in some of your games. But as you can see, uh, we can deal with it. Nothing to worry about as long as you know uh, these options of queen e1. A little better even is going to be knight d5. Finally, let's analyze our examples with tactical definitions where white is going to be able to execute the whole idea of uh, this is scam. So, e4, e5, knight, knight, you know this already. Bishop g2, they play bishop c5 in this game. Knight e2, d6, everything normal. d3, they castle, we castle, and then a6. That's the move that they need to play. a3, bishop here. At this point, white is playing knight d5. And this is also an idea that we should keep in mind. Because sometimes they, they might want to play d5. And, well, this is not the end of the world, but sometimes if you want to prevent it, it's good. So, knight d5. They play knight d4 in this game, there is a trade, and bishop takes, there is c3, and the bishop retreats back to a7. Then king h2, as you know, we want to play f4, black plays c6, there is a trade, and then finally we get what we want, a4. Expanding, undermining his center, improving the rook, this is looking fine. Black plays rook ad8, and then we expand even more, f5. Bishop back to c8, and then... Well, we can play g4 here, but queen h5 is also looking fine because you're playing here bishop to g5, skewer, also the queen in trouble in this line. So black is playing g6 here to clear more squares for the queen and also to try to get rid of our queen. But then we can play bishop g5 anyway. Because if they take the queen, we take his queen and you're attacking the rook and the king is very open there. And also you're getting the pawn on h5 after that. So it's going to look very bad for black. So they just retreat the queen, like queen h8. And, well, there is f takes g6. They capture with this pawn to keep the threat on our queen. And then there is queen h4. And at this point, black resigned. They are totally lost 
in this position. You're attacking the rook. The queen is on a shade. That's very sad. And also open file over here. King discovered. This is winning. Let me show you something so you understand how one is this position. Let's assume they play rook e8 here. We can play bishop to a6. And we're attacking the rook, so maybe they will capture. We will take back. And, uh, well, here they, they don't have too many options. They don't have too many moves. They are pretty much in Suxuan here. Let's say they play, a, I mean, almost in Suxuan. Let's say they play b5. And at this point, white is totally won. Uh, white has a very strong move here. I will say it very soon, but if you want to get familiar with the tactical ideas of this kind of positions, you can uh, try to find it on your own. The move that white can play here is the amazing queen e7. And the idea is that if they take, you have mate here. But also if they, if they don't take, you still have checkmate threat and you're taking the rook. So this is totally winning for white with that brilliant move at the end. Another game that uh, we can take a look at is this one where, you know, number development at the beginning, we have already seen this. And then at this point, they play b5. They also cleared a7 for the bishop. We can play d3, development, king h2, as we always do, and then b4. At this point, well, the knight goes to the center, d6, and then, uh, well, uh, this move knight e3. I need to say something here. Uh, this move bishop g5, the pain that we have been talking about is very tempting, but it's not working. Also, we already mentioned earlier the tricks that we should watch out for when uh, we have the king on h2, and they are the checks. Because very often uh, there, might, there might be a piece hanging, or in some other positions, if there is a pawn here, they can capture to bring the queen later to h4. So we must uh, be careful with uh, this kind of checks here when the king is on h2, because the, the, the knight can make contact with our king when, when we have the king on h2. That's something we should keep in mind. So if we play bishop g5 here, extremely tempting. They just play knight g4, and they get our bishop, and they're going to be fine. So that's why in the game, what is playing knight 3 here, just a uh, maneuvering a little. Um, f4 is coming, so black is playing here knight 7 and then finally f4. F takes, I mean e, e takes, f, g takes f, and then knight 7 d4 is very normal, expanding, getting a tempo, bishop to a7, and then knight g3. Now we move our pieces toward the king side. Rook e8, c3, reinforcing. So we can move our queen, a5, f5, c5, and then knight to g4. More pieces toward the king side. Also, the bishop is better now. Also, ideas over here. Black plays here, knight to c6. And then, boom, f6, breaking the structure. Black plays g6. And then, at this point, this is totally won here. A very serious weakness on the dark squares. So we can just play here queen d2. And this is winning. This is game over. And black resigned. Let me show you, as always, some line. For example, if they play king h8, we can play e5. And you're going to understand this move very soon. But basically, the idea is that you want to bring the knight. Because only with the queen, we're not getting much. They can defend. But if we can bring the knight to g5, then we are winning. So that's why e5 is very important. Also, by the way, nice chain of pawns over here. Well, d takes e5, there is this move. And if they play this, you can play this. And if they play this, trading queens, there is this move. Boom, knight g5. Because now you're selling checkmate. And if they take your queen, we are checkmate on f7 instead. So as you could see, after this queen d2 is totally won, and that's why uh, black resigned in this game. There is also this example where you know, normal development, uh, the bishop is inside the chain of pawns this time. And well, they waste a move here. And b takes is Yeah, black didn't play very well, but I think it's instructive because we're getting to execute our plans. That's what we need. So knight e7, that's what we need to, to understand the, the line. f4, uh, e takes f4, g takes f4, and then a knight g6. So there's a 5 here, knight h4. And then bishop h1. The bishop is a great defender. So we want to keep it on the board as long as possible. Also the knight on h4, as long as it is by itself, is disconnected from other pieces, it should not be a problem. 
if they can bring the queen, the knight, the other knight and the bishop, then, well, it can be a problem. By now, it doesn't look like a problem. So we can just play bishop h1 here, d5, e5, knight d7, and then d4. We are reinforcing, and this is looking fine again, because we are blocking the center a little, and we are expanding on the king side. Our queen is a little discovered, so that's why blocking the center is making some sense at this point. c5, pieces to the king side f6 because also there are threats here like now we are playing f6 and all these all these kind of ideas also queen g4 is coming so black is playing f6 here and then e6 then knight goes back to b8 probably they want to bring it over here maybe block the past pawn later but it's going to be too late here we can play queen h5 and the knight is in trouble even if they play g5 uh white is playing queen a6 and now there are more ideas like bringing the knight to h5 or even some sacrifice here with the bishop. After queen e7, that's exactly what happens. Bishop takes g5 and this is winning. Black resigned. What can happen after this? Well, if they accept the bishop, if they don't, if they don't upset, I mean the knight is lost. They're losing material and they're losing the game. But if they accept, we can play f6. And then we are attacking the queen and there's checkmate threats over here. Also, we are threatening f7. So many threats, this is totally one. Let's say queen c7, you can play f7. And if they move the king, you have mate. So that's totally one for white. That's why at this point, after bishop g5, black resigned. So this is Vienna game, the line with 3 g3. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and this has been useful. If it was like that, remember, like, subscribe and all those things. Uh, video over here, so check it out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Play the right move. See you in the next.